Now think about this for a minute. Who are the top 3 smartphone makers in the world right now? Apple, Samsung, and Huawei. Now what do the three have in common? They manufacture their own SoCs. Apple has their A series, Samsung have Exynos, and Huawei have the high silicon Kirin. Now, why do they do this? It's because it helps these brands maximize profits. Now, yes, Samsung doesn't exclusively use Exynos chips. They also use Qualcomm chips and sometimes even Spectrum. Uh, but Samsung's portfolio is just that fast. Now, Xiaomi joins that list uh, of manufacturers with their own SoCs with their first one, the Surge S1. So, how does the Surge S1 fare? On paper at least, what do you need to know about it? Well, let's find out in this video. Hey guys, my name's Ash, you're watching c 4 Tech, and let's get started. So here's what you need to know about the Surge S1. Number one, it's built on the 28 nanometer manufacturing process, no 14 or 16 in nanometer here. Number two, it's a combination of eight Cortex A53 cores, four lower powered cores, four higher powered cores. If a 28 nanometer A53, as in two sets of uh, quad A53 combination, sounds familiar to you, well, Qualcomm's been using that for a while now. Last year's 61 series chips all sported similar configurations. The 615, 616, 617, and even the 430, 435. Uh, from this year. So here Xiaomi's got one set clocked up to 2.2 gigahertz and the other up to 1.4. That's great. Xiaomi's benchmarks show the Surge S1 performing far better than even the Snapdragon 625 chip. If Xiaomi is actually able to implement it, Qualcomm should definitely be worried. Now why? Well, here's why. Now, with the 615 and the 616, Qualcomm used two sets of Cortex A53 cores with one set clocked at 1 GHz and the other clocked up to 1.7 GHz. But at least with the 616, there were quite a few brands like even Xiaomi themselves who were voluntarily underclocking those powerful A53 cores, the higher clocked A53 cores, down to 1.5. So that, is, that was to avoid the overheating and throttling issues. This led to a Qualcomm coming out of the 617 eventually that had those cores clocked at 1.5 anyway and had the lower powered cores, uh, the lower clocked cores clocked a little higher at 1.2 to kind of get a balance. But we all know how the 617 fared. We've seen that with phones like the Moto G4 Plus. It's not really been great. Heating or throttling does persist. Now, if Xiaomi, with their first attempt, managed to pull off 2.2 and 1.4 GHz clock speeds uh, on the A53 cores built utilizing the 28 nanometer manufacturing process, that's going to be a job extremely well done. Now, handling the GPU duties here will be the Mali T860 MP4. Well, I can't really recall off the top of my head uh, any T860 MP4 configurations that I've used. I do remember the MediaTek Helio P10 series using the dual core variant of the Mali T860, and we've tested quite a few of those phones. Me personally, I remember the Mali T860 MP2 performing quite well on the Xperia XA, so the T860 MP4 should be quite capable. In case you aren't aware, the MP here st stands for multiprocessing, that's MP2 means uh, two cores, MP4 stands for four cores and so on. Other features include the 14-bit dual ISP for better image processing, support for Volt T security, and all the regular SoC stuff that brands love to market. The Surge S1 seems impressive on paper, but whether it succeeds or not is going to depend on how it works out with real-time usage and not benchmarks. So only time will tell, the first phone with the Surge S1 is the Xiaomi Mi 5C. And we will be trying to get our hands on it sometime soon and we'll have more on this topic once we do. Now that said, it's worth mentioning that even if the Surge S1 bombs, it's good for us. Why? I still respect and welcome Xiaomi doing this. If you look back, the early Exynos chips you know, even if we go back just a couple of years, just think about how how so many of us were disappointed that Samsung was selling Exynos variants of their flagships in India, and we were wishing that they sold Qualcomm instead. But these days, with say the S7 or the S6, 
the Exynos chips have been doing exceedingly well, right? Uh, even compared to their uh, Snapdragon counterparts. Uh, I mean, the, did the S6 have a Snapdragon counterpart? I don't think it did. Oops. Anyway, uh, you get what I'm saying. Similarly, the high silicon Kirin chips a few years back were not too good. In fact, the Honor 8 was the first time a Huawei chip impressed me. So even if it's not an overnight success, the fact that Xiaomi is trying is only going to lead to more players in this game of chips and more of the competition, better it is for us, the end consumers. So that's it, guys. The launch of the Surge S1 seemed to be a major enough development for me to shoot a video letting you know. And here we are. If you did like this video, if you did find it informative, go ahead, give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, if you hated it for some reason, go ahead, vote it down. Either way, you've made it this far. So pat yourself on the back, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. If you are already subscribed, do this to make sure you get notified as soon as a video goes live here on C4 Retech. That's it for now. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ashia from C4 Retech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.